Hello everyone, welcome to this video. Today I'm going to show you how to simulate gap elements in Abacus CAE, which are very similar to what you can do in SAP 2000. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create an, a building and I will create another building and I will keep these buildings slightly apart from each other. There will be a clearance between the buildings as you normally see in other examples and then they will be attached to that surface or floor and then i will push the building from both sides under compression and i will show you as the as this clearances decrease how these gap elements really become active and you will have some pressure which will be created between the buildings so this can be used to simulate the the closure of gap and the contact between the buildings how they are interacting with each other in the second part of this tutorial i will show you if the building is under cyclic loading so you basically push and then you pull it back then how your building is going to behave or these gap elements will gonna behave in that case so in order to do that i can use many different types of formulations and the best approach in my opinion would be to use contact formulation so we will define two contact surfaces between the two buildings and we can either use hard contact if it's a very rigid contact between the two buildings if there are some kind of dissipation or let's say you have sands or something between the two objects then you can use softened contact formulation and in that case you can either define the contact pressure as a function of the clearance between the buildings and you have to provide this kind of data or you can use different types of laws such as the linear or exponential laws in case of exponential law as the object moves nearer towards the other object and if clearance reaches to c0 value then your pressure will start to increase exponentially and at a zero thickness again you have to define what will be the pressure at a zero clearance value and then it keeps on increasing exponentially depending on the relationship which you have described based on the parameters i will show you how you can describe that in this tutorial as well step by step so let's jump into that and to abacus and see how you can really simulate that in addition to that i will also show you what are the other approaches which are more tedious in my opinion where you can use a spring and also truss elements between the two buildings to define that kind of behavior so see you on the other side okay let's start the problem now i will first create a part and it will be a 2d deformable shell I will create a rectangle for the building again i'm not going to create all those windows which i showed you in the start you can create if you want by just creating more rectangles and subtract it from the actual sketch so this is one building number one now i'm going to go and create another part which will be the building number two which will be smaller than the first building again i'm using a rectangular building and no windows as i showed you in the thumbnail for properties i'm going to define everything as elastic because i'm going to keep life my, my life simple and my main target is to simulate the gap elements so i'm going to use some random properties and let's say I, steel is my best, best material so i'm going to use the properties of the steel but you can use concrete or equivalent to concrete or steel composite as well so this is defined now i'm going to create a solid section which will then assign the properties to each individual component and now I'm assigning the properties. This is assigned to part one and now part two. And now I will do the same for part one as well. So assign sections, select the part, press done, select the section and it's green. So material properties are assigned. Now in the assembly, I will just assemble these two parts together and I will offset them because I want to keep some clearance between the two buildings. So I will translate it and I will first measure the distance maybe so i think it's better to first measure the distance and then i will keep the clearance to be let's say 0.5 or something between the two buildings so right now if you look it's the distance is 1.5 so maybe i can translate the one of the buildings towards the other and make the clearance to be 0.5 so i'll press translate so i'll select action point and then I will select the end points. I will move minus one maybe. So this way, this building will go closer to the other one. And now 
you see there's a clearance between the two which is 0.5 so now i know the total clearance between the two buildings is 0.5 so i can displace the one of the buildings to a distance of 0.5 i will start with the step it's a static general step i'm going to go with because i am not interested in inertia at this point i'm defining 10,000 as the maximum number of increments and the mean time increment size to be 0.1 Again, if you're not familiar with this, then I have a look at my video on standard analysis and you will see I have defined all these parameters in detail. Interactions. So I need to create the interaction between the two surfaces and I'm going to use surface to surface contact. So I will select the master surface. Again, these both surfaces are same, but generally master surface is more stiffer. So this is master and now I'm selecting the slave surface and this is the less stiffer surface, which is the slave surface. In this case, both are the same. So it doesn't matter. Now I need to define the interaction properties between them and I'm going to define it as a contact properties. So I will do that now, select this and now I will define the tangential behavior first. You can keep it frictionless or if you know the friction between the two objects then you can define a friction coefficient as well. So let's define some friction coefficient for the E. So I'm just using a random value of 4.1 for friction coefficient. For normal behavior you again as I showed you in the slide you can have hard contact, you can have exponential contact. So hard contact is when they are in contact with each other, only then contact will be established. While for exponential, you have to define the pressure at zero clearance, which is the maximum pressure in that graph, which I showed you before. So I'm giving it a value of 200 and at, at a clearance of C naught 0.5, which is the current value, the pressure is zero. So as soon as the clearance goes below 0.5, the pressure will start to increase so under compression so this is how this gap element or contact formulation daily works so you can use also linear as well so it will be a linear increase or tabular as i showed you before so you have to give the tabular data in that case so i'm going to use exponential for the time being so yeah i don't need anything else no i think it's a mechanical problem you can also define damping and other things if you have some kind of soil or something else present which will damp your energy but for the time being it's fine so this way you have defined the contact or gap elements in this case in a way and now i'm going to define the boundary conditions so first let's define the displacement boundary conditions and i will fix the bottom surface of first building u1 and u2 zero and i will slide the other building towards the first building in this case so i'm going to fix it in the vertical direction no sorry vertical direction which is u2 direction and now I will define a boundary condition which will push this in this direction. So let's first select this, continue, select the object surface and then give a value of U1 as minus 0.5 or something or 0.6 to whatever you want. So 0.5 is minus because we are going in the negative x direction. So I think boundary conditions are fixed. Again, your bottom of the building of the second building should not be moving, but for demonstration, I'm just moving the whole building, right? You can keep that fixed as well. So now the distance is 0.5, so we can keep it that way, or we can give a slightly higher value of 0.6 as well, so that you will get some elastic deformation in both the buildings as well. Now it's time to mesh. So I will mesh the part, part by part. Let's seed it first. And I think it's pretty core. So let's give a global size of one and then mesh it okay then i will do the same for the second part again i will do the global mesh size of one maybe and then i will mesh it and i hope i will get a conforming mesh it looks very similar so that's good and now i go to the job and i will submit it for an analysis i will create a job i will name it as job one or whatever you want but i will you know, call it let's say soft contact and for everything else i will leave it default but for precision i always go for full precision and i will submit so it should not take longer you see the monitor if you monitor it then you will see if everything is going fine input file processor went well the simulation starts and then it will finish in no time because it's just a very small 2d simulation you see it's finished so you can just cross this or press dismiss and press results and now if you see the results you will see 
there is some pressure and one of the building has moved towards it towards the bigger building so if you move it like you can see as the building is coming closer so based on that exponential relationship the pressure is increasing and that's this is causing a stresses in your structure so you see the pressure goes up to 200 which was the maximum in that case so again it's elastic body so obviously there is elastic deformation as well so that's why you are not going up to 200 if you have a rigid bodies in contact then you can easily teach to the 200 pressure which you gave as a maximum so this way you can basically have gap elements which are there if you pull it back again so it will go back to zero and there will be no tension loading on your structures as well because there is no welding or join joining process there now if you want to do cyclic loading then you can go for tabular case and in that case i can say that okay i will first move it from 0 to 0 0.5 i will say it goes to 0. minus 0 0.51 and then at again total time of 1 it goes back to 0 so it pushes it to 0. 0.5 and then it goes back to 0 so it's like a cyclic one cycle or one amplitude of one cycle i would say half cycle i can say in other words so now if i run it again then now you will see this building will move from left to from right to left and then again move back to right so the pressure will increase and then it should start to decrease again so you see it's finished you go back results and then if you see that it has gone back and the pressure is very low now because your gap element your clearance is very high and obviously the exponential relationship really makes the pressure to go to zero so you see as you move closer the pressure increases and then as moves, you move away the pressure again goes back to zero so this way you can use these kind of gap elements from mechanical perspective and you can replicate the gap elements which are used in sap 2000 in abacus ce other ways you can also use simulations if you use hard coordinate formulation and in that case there will be zero pressure until both of the surfaces are in contact because you need a zero clearance for hard contact to have the maximum pressure and that pressure will be equivalent to the elastic will be computed based on the elastic moduli of both the materials which are in contact so now i'm running with that quickly and as you can see it will finish in no time results so you will see that the all the stresses are zero because once the contact is deactivated and your pressure goes to zero so as you go up you see your pressure is still zero as compared to the exponential case but as soon as you go to con in make in contact with the other object then you will have a maximum pressure so in this case the time it was in contact with the other component we haven't captured that as an output so we don't see that value but you can capture it if you increase the number of increments or if you can okay so what you can do is in order to do that let's increase this value to a larger value so you can have some elastic deformation so let's give it a value of 0.6 so this means that you are pushing too hard this object so again run it and so that if it's penetration is high so we should be able to capture that point in time when you will have a pressure finite pressure rather than almost zero pressures so i'm just trying to capture that for the timing i can also do it by increasing the number of outputs but i'm doing it with the boundary condition because i'm not constrained with the boundaries so now again it's 31 but you see as soon as it starts to go towards it it's still almost zero stresses are zero and then they increase because the contact has been established as soon as they are in contact with each other the pressure becomes very large depending on the elastic moduli of the component and as soon as contact goes away then your material starts to relax and your pressures and stresses start to go back to zero so this is another way you can model so again depending on the contact behavior or gap behavior between the structures you can use different types of formulations whether hard contact softened contact you can have exponential or tabular behavior as well sometimes in two come between the two components if you have some kind of soil then you have very much dampening there so softened contact is more useful in those cases uh, what else you can do so if you go to interactions you can actually create different types of connectors rather than this formulation but in that case you will have to create those connectors between the points of that object so you can create springs some people have used springs but again the springs can also have some effect in the tension so you have to see which connectors will be more useful for for your case 
So this is one of the way you can build the connectors. So, but it's a more tedious process in my opinion. You can go to the section, for example, and you can select different, so you can have beam, drew joints, walls. You can create different types of connection elements as well, which may have tension and compression behavior in, in reality. Similarly, so these are different options. Again, you can play around and if you really want to go in that direction. Multipoint constraint is another thing which you can use, but I think in my opinion, the best is to use this contact formulation, whether softened contact or hard contact to define those gap elements because as a subscriber asks under tension, you don't need these, these things to have any type of loading which is carried over by them. So I think this is the best opinion also so you can fine tune these parameters using that. So hard contact, exponential contact, linear or tabular contact formulation. You can use any one of those. So I hope this made sense. And if you have any questions, then please comment below and I will try to explain everything then. Thank you and bye for now.